All right, everybody. Here we are. Um, I'm at a restaurant watching the game, be quite honest, and uh, had a few people say, hey, you need to go live. So this is me on my phone uh, reacting to what we have going on right now in Iowa City, Western Michigan, trailing Iowa, 14 to 10 at halftime. I'm trying to avoid the sun for my eyes. So bear with me here. Um, let's see if I can get this. Will this switch around? Let me see if I can get this to turn. Yeah, there we go. Full screen. Perfect. All right. I don't know what there is to say, really. Uh, this is kind of just a completely organic, weird reaction to, man, a weird first half. Um, let's start with, I guess, the early touchdown from Western Michigan. They hit Iowa on an explosive play of like 59 yards down the field. Jamar Harris's first game back. Um, I, I give him some level of rope given the fact that he hasn't played in like a year and a half remember he missed all of last year due to injury he was suspended for the first two games this season and uh looked like i, I don't want to i'm not going to uh, cast aspersions on on jamari because i don't know exactly and again this would be better for for coach patterson after the game whose assignment that was i know xavier wampa was laid over the top but uh, I, again i just don't know conceptually uh who the responsibility falls on on, on that long uh, deep touchdown pass. So Western Michigan goes up 7-0. Then you have the lightning delay that lasts, you know, 20 minutes or so. And man, it's just been a weird game. Iowa comes back out, runs running the ball at will with Leshawn Williams. Jazz Patterson got dinged up, but Iowa running the ball at will. They tied up seven uh seven off I believe it was LaShawn Williams touchdown. And then the the uh the injury to Luke Lachey. Uh, Iowa's number one tight end. Uh, goes down on what just looked like an ugly, ugly, I don't want to say break because I think that's too premature to say that, but an ugly play, Luke Lachey goes down on a tackle. I'm not even going to comment. We'll, we'll talk about it after the game. Um, play calling. I, I just, I don't know how to even transcribe how disappointed I am in, in play calling. Um, you know, and I, I feel like I'm a broken record and I've gotten ripped for continuing to criticize play calling week after week. But I, I really don't know what else to say other than um, we had Iowa had three waste downs that drive. They tried to take advantage of zero waste downs. Uh, and when I say waste down, I'm talking second and one, second and two, second and three. And it ended up on a third down and short. Um, got a plane going over the top of us conveniently here. Uh, I believe it was third down and short was the play where Luke Lachey got tangled. Um, I'd have to go back and look at it, but uh, I believe it was, and it was going to bring up fourth and short. They ended up missing the field goal. Luke is not carted off. He was, he was helped off. And then he, he went out of the game on crutches. Um, Iowa then comes back, scores a touchdown. Defense has been pretty good. Although they did give up like three or four explosive plays that half. Phil Parker's not going to be happy. And, you you can you can uh, you, you can bet the farm that he's going to have those guys ready in the second half. I was not losing this game. Let me just make that clear. I was not losing this game to Western Michigan. Um, now maybe I'll be the look like the biggest idiot in the world when this game is over, but I, I I don't see any way Western Michigan pulls this game out. I just don't think Iowa's defense can play any worse than they did in that first half, frankly. Um, so I think they'll be fine. They'll get through this game, but obviously there's concern not just because of the Luke Lachey injury. But Iowa's lack of dominance in this game um, on both ends, but specifically, or on both sides of the ball, specifically with the offense. There, I mean, that's not a, a new song we're singing to anybody. Just awful. And then you have, uh, at the very end, you have the, the second interception of the day for Cade McNamara. By the way, he started off the day, first drive of the game, bad throw, bad decision into double coverage, throws a pick, then threw another uh, deep ball into the end zone, into double coverage, a pick there at the end of the first half. And then Brian Ferentz, first real meltdown that we've seen from him that I can recall. Now, maybe, maybe somebody will tell me I'm wrong. The first real meltdown I've seen from Brian Ferentz since I think 2017 in the press box, the Minnesota meltdown, as we like to call it, um, where he, he had enough with an official. I'm assuming that was involving an official too. I don't know what he was upset there at the end. It's here's, here's the other problem folks. Um, you know, a, a Brian Ferentz apologist, Kirk apologist is going to look at that situation and say, well, I like the fire. I like the fact that he's upset. You didn't get points there at the end of the first half. I don't care who the opponent is. The problem is, let me go back to the contract thing. The problem lies in the fact that once again, 
you have this contract thing uh, lingering over Brian Ferentz's head. Everybody, not just me, everybody's been talking about how this game was important to that, to the future of his, potentially the future of his career at Iowa, specifically with that 25 point per game mark that he's aspiring to hit. And so it looks to me from the outside looking in, you've got 14 points, you've underachieved in the first half. And then you have a throw to the end zone. And even if a throw drops incomplete, you get a field goal out of it. But instead, they get zero. And it looks from the outside looking in like Brian's throwing a temper tantrum because he didn't get his seven points or his three points. And he's got 14 points against Western Michigan, and he reads the writing on the wall. Let me tell you something right now, folks. If they don't score 30-plus in this game, Brian ain't hitting 25 points per game for the season. I almost guarantee you that. Um, I think they'll have a hard time even if they do score uh, 25 or excuse me, 30 or 35 points in this game. And they may still do that. Got 14 points at halftime. Could have easily had a touchdown there at the end. Um, would have made it 21 to 10. Um, am I concerned about the outcome of this game? Ultimately, no. Um, but the bottom line is um, really, really bad and, and bad for a number of reasons. I feel really bad for Luke Cliche. I, I've heard a number of different um, theories. I didn't see the replay particularly well but I saw a number of different uh, reactions to that fall um, that it looked like a bad break. Uh, again, I'm no doctor and I didn't see the, the replay very well. I have a hard time believing they would allow him to pull himself off on crutches with, you know, if it was a, a compound fracture, you would think they'd, they'd get him out of there on a cart. So I don't know. Um, but that's obviously bad. The good news, if there is any, it's just like when Noah Shannon went down for the year on the suspension, they've got the depth folks at tight end. But boy, play calling is still a major concern. They're running the ball well against a bad, bad defense. Passing game has not been pretty. Um, this has been an under uh, underachieving first half, uh, to say the least. I appreciate everybody being here. I'm sorry I didn't get to all the comments. James, Allen, Kevin, um, Hawkeye Five, T Hink. Appreciate you all being here. I am in Ames right now, outside of a restaurant. I won't say which, but I'm outside of a restaurant watching the game, and I'll be making my way back inside here pretty soon. Long shot, Hawk. Don't know if it's a broken leg, but obviously it's a, a sad situation. I agree with CJ. Kate's timing has been off. He's thrown a couple of these balls late. I thought that he had a chance at yeah, hitting Seth Anderson in the end zone there, um, but uh, just just a little bit late. Esther, I'm doing good. Thank you for being here. Um, <laughs> respond to some of these people. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you, Chad and and Spaceboy74. Uh, everybody being here, rough. Uh, Rough Rider returns. Dylan, thank you. Uh, Will, boy, people upset. I, I get it. And that's why I wanted to jump on here, kind of give people something to, to listen to or watch during halftime. And uh, Jason, no, it does not look good for, for Lachey. Um, Sam speculating on that. I, I get it. Um, I don't want to hear this crap about Matt, Kate McNamara being the problem. He's been off today. But my gosh, how many different quarterbacks, how many different systems and quarterbacks and personnel do we need to watch to understand that it's not personnel was it was quarterback part of the problem last year sure but it's not even close to being the biggest problem this year all right it's just not it's and it's never been the biggest problem okay let me make that abundantly clear if we didn't already realize that appreciate everybody being here folks i think the second half is getting ready to start we'll talk to everybody soon i will post game with coach john patterson following the game we'll talk to you then